Hello everyone, this is Akanksha, your instructor from Brilika Services. So today we are going to start with how you're going to install Anaconda and how you're going to start with Jupyter Notebook. Okay, as we are learning about Python and data science in general, so we need to know how and where we are going to incorporate our Python programming language code or source code, whatever you may say, where we are going to actually code about our project. Okay, so first and first, we'll start with Anaconda distribution. Okay, Anaconda distribution, or simply we can say Conda comes with is a combination of preloaded packages and libraries of different programming languages. For example, if you want to work with Jupyter Notebook or Spider, you can work here for Python language, okay? It also has R Studio incorporated with it, which will help you out when you're learning or working through R language, okay? So before starting out, let us see how you're going to learn about Anaconda distribution, how you're going to download it and how you're going to install it, okay? So first thing first, what you have to do is go to Google and search for Anaconda Python, okay? Or simply you can search for Anaconda distribution, okay? Click on the first link that is individual edition. Once it opens up, we'll have a screen like this, okay? So what you're gonna do, just scroll it down. As you can see, it's your data science toolkit. So if you're working on Python or with R or any other machine learning uh, project, it will help you out in various ways by incorporating with you with several open source packages and libraries, okay? And in short, we call it as Conda, okay? So what you have to do, if your page is open into this screen, just scroll it down a bit. And at the end, we're going to see Anaconda installers. So what you have to do here is according to your requirement, according to your system that you have, okay? Just select on the one that you want. Suppose if you're working on Windows, just select on 60-bit bit graphical installer that is 510 MB. As mine is a Mac OS, so I'll just select 64 bit one and it totally depends upon your operating system. So mine is Mac OS, so I'll just select this one. And you can see the file has been gone to the downloading. Okay, so the file is downloading. Once it downloads, I'll just stop it here because I've, it is already preloaded in my system. So I'll just stop it here. Once it is downloaded, right? What you have to do, You'll just select on the downloaded file that has been downloaded into your system and open up the Anaconda setup, or you can say installer, correct? Open it up and select on next to continue. Once it is done, just keep on doing the same towards you reach the, when you reach the license agreement part and click on agree button. Follow each and every steps one by one. And finally you have to do it till you see the finish button. Finish means that your system has now been installed with this Anaconda distribution system, okay? Now, moving on to the next part is about Jupyter Notebook, okay? So first of all, what is Jupyter Notebook? Jupyter Notebook is an open source web application that is used for creating live code, Okay, numerical simulation, statistical modeling, data visualization, machine learning, and much, much more. In general, we use it for Python programming language. So when once your Anaconda Navigator is installed, you will be left with something like this. Okay, you have what you have to do is go to your system. If you're working on Mac, just go on apps and open Anaconda Navigator. If you're working on Windows, what you have to go, where you have to go is search in the windows bar and search for Anaconda Navigator and then open it up. Once you open it up, you will have something like this. Okay. As you can see, we have Anaconda Navigator open in front of you and you can see it here. IBM Watson Studio is incorporated here. Jupyter Lab is here. Jupyter Notebook is here. Spider is here. PyCharm Professional and R Studio, right? Also Orange 3. Orange 3 is used for data mining purpose. Notebook, Spider, and PyCharm, that is Jupyter Notebook, but Spider and PyCharm is basically used for Python development, and R Studio is used for R programming language. Correct? Now, there are some of the things that we need to know. Second thing, just 
if you go to environments, you can see all the packages that are installed in this Anaconda distribution, right? Suppose if you're working on a system and there's something that you want in Python programming language, some module or some libraries, suppose we'll just select non not installed. And suppose you want a package, for example, Keras you want, and Keras is not inst installed in your navigator, right? So you can just go to not select installed one, search for the package that you want, correct? Search for the one that you want in your system and then click on apply button. By this way, you can simply install any module or package that is not available currently in your notebook or in your Anaconda navigator. You don't have to do anything regarding pip install or something. You can directly install it from the environments, whatever and whichever is required, okay? Now let's start with Jupyter Notebook, as you can see here, you have the same navigator. So what do you have to do? Launch Anaconda Navigator and click on Jupyter Notebook launch button. Okay, now let's see if I select this launch button, it will open up Jupyter Notebook into my web browser. Okay, you can see the basic homepage of Jupyter Notebook, correct? So as you can see, there are so many files available here. Okay, so we'll just be starting how you're going to start with Jupyter Notebook, getting familiar with it. Okay, so the first thing first, we see these many folders that are available, correct? So these are just directories or folders that are available in Jupyter Notebook. And whenever you will open up the Anaconda and launch this Jupyter Notebook again, even if your system restarts, these folders and files will be available here. Okay, now, they work in the same way as any other file or directory in our system does, okay? Suppose I have created any folder. Uh, let's talk about this one. First of all, we'll talk, talk about how you're going to create a folder, okay? So just go to new and select folder, right? See, a new untitled folder has been available here, okay? Created seconds ago. So I'll just select this, right? Currently, I don't have any particular name here, so I'll just select it and rename it first. So I want it to be renamed as data science batch new. This is just a new folder that I'm creating. So I have a new folder here, data science batch new, that's, that was just created right now. Now, just like any other notebook that we work in, as in a hardcore format means real world. Whenever we program, we write something in a notebook, right? So here also, if you want to write any code, if you want to do any scripting, right? You will just go to new and create on notebook Python 3. The file that is available here in Jupyter Notebook is called a notebook where you, you, you are going to code. First one first, we'll just change the name. So what you have to do, just select this and select give a name suppose i'm giving it demo one and just rename it as simple as it is okay now you can see there are two things first one is this one whenever i'll open this up you can see here this is the first cell that we have and it has written code so i'll just select instead of code whenever i want to code i'll just select it like this whenever i want to write something like a paragraph or as in a sentence Right, I'll just select Markdown. And in Markdown, I'm going to write, this is my first Jupyter notebook. Okay, and then enter. Now you want to add a new cell where you want to code, then select new and automatically it will be turned into a code. So if I'll do something like this, this will remain as a paragraph or sentence that I want in my notebook, right? Up Whenever you're coding, you want to annotate something that whatever you are doing here, why you're doing and you want to explain some things about your code, then you can simply select the markdown option from here. And whenever you want to code, you can simply write it here. Okay. As of now, you can see Python 3 is selected here. And the circle here, it shows empty circle. It means currently your Jupyter kernel is idle. It's not doing anything. If you see something black filled circle, right? It means the kernel is busy and you have to wait until it becomes empty again. Okay, it means some program is running. Okay, 
So let's talk about Python first. Whenever you're starting with Python programming language, the first thing you do is learn about print statement. Print means to display something in your program, right? And the basic thing about any programming language, whenever you start with any programming language, you always start with one program called Hello World. Okay, so if you want to print hello world into your program, what you'll do, you'll just write print. And whenever you write print, you will start with two brackets, small bracket. Inside double quotes, you write whatever you want to print into your system or display into your system, right? Then just select on run and it will print your sentence here. Okay, now this was a basic program you can have in a Jupyter notebook regarding Python 3. Now, suppose you want to save it, it will be automatically saved for sure. But if you want to save it like this, you can save and checkpoint. It means whenever from where you have left it, you can start it from there itself. That is checkpoint, right? Then also, if you want to save it or download it as a PDF or a .py file or an HTML file, you can download it by going into the file option. And then you can see download. Okay, so if we want to download it as PDF, I'll just select PDF via LaTeX. So I'll have something in that format. Okay, or if you want to download it as a PDF or a Python file, you can simply download it as a Python file and share it among your connections. Okay. As you can see, if you want something else to do with your file, you can go and search for file option. If you want to edit it, means copy cell, delete cell, split cell, these are called cells, okay? Wherever you're writing is called cell. This is cell number one, run once, so it is written one here, okay? You can do it here. If you want to insert in something like insert cell above or below, then you can do it like this. Suppose you're stuck somewhere and you're not getting your output, right? It's like your system or your kernel has been busy for a very long time. So what you can do, you can just simply go and restart your kernel. Restart and run all, you can do it. Or simply restart your kernel. If you have trouble connecting it, the network or trouble connecting it with the server, just select on reconnect, okay? And after this is done, you can just simply close it up. And you can see the file has already been created, demo1.ipynb. I, P, and when we come up, I, Python notebook. Okay, if you open it up, it will be from the same place you have left it. Okay, so this was all regarding Jupyter notebook. Let's see if something is remaining, right? We have discussed it. You can rename it as per your choice. Okay, and you can see how you're going to use it for a basic Python program that is for print statement. Okay. So that was all regarding starting with Jupyter Notebook. Thank you all and we'll be joining soon.